round one. Fight! Round two. Fight. You lose. Do you want to know? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Do you want to know why the two first Marvel Machines have felt like they really didn't work? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. What I'll show you now, you will never be able to forget this. It's a decision matrix. The decision matrix. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it changes your design requirements forever. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay, the decision matrix. This comes from Mike Perry from yesterday. Um, in this live stream, we're going to go through decision making processes design requirements vibraphone design requirements which is very fundamental for the whole design of the Marmachine machine 3 sketches that we made yesterday in an epic brainstorming session with me and sir 3k suggestions from the viewers we're gonna make a decision matrix i've never made one before but we're gonna learn from this tutorial that i'm showing on screen and then we are going to fill in our decision matrix and then we're going to make a result. And hopefully, by the end of this stream, we can go over to the design requirement document and make a huge decision for the Vibraphone design requirements. That's on uh, the uh, menu for today's stream. I'm here with my friend, Sir 3K. I'm drinking from his own mug. He doesn't know it yet. Oh, <laughs> you didn't tell me that. Well, wow. Sir 3K I'm mug. not sneaky. Wow, we're off to a great start. <laughs> did you did, did you see our professionalism in the stream here? With a green screen and everything. Yeah, we forgot that we removed the chroma key filter. What what can you do? This is what we do every day. We can't have everything perfectly aligned all the time. You said this big fight you were watching the weekend. Their live stream was worse than ours. So oh, okay. yes. Yeah. oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's get straight into it. Um... So, decision making. Um, for me, I think uh, the task now in this process is to learn a little bit about processes and to apply as quick as I can without get like getting bogged down in a rabbit hole. And I have been um, um, I have been catting. Uh, so this is kind of my visual aid for decision making. All this CAD we've done so far is just a way of sketching in 3D. Um, so this is kind of a potentially a visual uh, decision matrix, kind of. Um, but to actually... <coughs> so what happened yesterday was that the design requirements for the vibraphone, most of all two things, how many notes and how fast can we repeat these notes? Um, will decide the future of, of this whole machine and the whole design. And I think um, for me, 
I had so many options and everything except, uh, affects everything else. And then Mark Perry, friend of the pod. Oh, <laughs> Avengineer Galore. Avengineer Galore, Gretzky Hall of Famer, Mike Perry said, um, maybe a decision matrix. And I Googled this morning and it looks kind of awesome. I think I understand. So I found this ASQ website. What is a decision matrix? Um, so let's just take their definition here. A decision matrix evaluates and prioritizes a list of options and is a decision making tool. Um, and I thought this was very apt when to use a decision matrix, when a list of options must be narrowed to one choice. And this is true for us. Um, I, I, can, I can take you in a little closer here. Um, when a list of options must be narrowed to one choice, we can only have one design of, say, in this case, what we're going to discuss today is the, is the vibraphone. Um, so we can only have one design on the final marble machine. Like, so so this, this is apt. When the decision must be made on the basis of several criteria, yes, there is a huge, uh, a lot of things to take into account. After a list of options has been reduced to a manageable number by list reduction. So uh, at point uh, six, where we're going to write our decision matrix in the stream, we have to reduce um, the list of options. So um, the decision matrix procedure. So this we're going to go through this step by step in step six of the live stream down there. Um, but before we go there, I want to, uh, so this is kind of uh, the high level um, introduction to, um, sorry for this, uh, I'm going to fix that forever. <laughs> <laughs> now that's not going to happen again. Um, so basically what we're going to do is that we're going to write our uh, options for um, we have kind of one thing here and one thing there, and then you kind of give points and you end up with kind of a, a result. And it also says, I thought I saw, um, the result doesn't have to be followed, but the resulting point can help aid further discussion. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go over to step two, design requirements. And this is um, the new way I'm designing uh, this machine compared to the previous ones. I'm writing a proper design requirement document with help from um, uh, competent engineers in the audience. So um, you can find this document on the website. And basically we're learning right now how to write a document like this. And I think what's really fun with what we're doing today is that today is kind of the first stream where the stream is actually about finding out a very fundamental design requirement. So how these vibraphone bars will function and, and um, no, why, Mo not how, what, what we need. So by the end of this decision matrix, we should be able to go into this design requirement document and fill in some design requirement here under point five. So looking forward to that. Vibraphone design requirement. I have actually started um, sketching here. Let me see. Uh, so here, I started yesterday. There are two like major things for the vibraphone. Note repeatability, how fast a note can be repeated and note range in one song. So how many notes do we want? And then some follow-up questions here. Do we need to be able to replace the notes? Do we need to tune the resonators? Should we just use a full scale vibraphone? And to cut to the chase here, I am thinking about just using something like this. Um, I'm thinking about using off the shelf, full size vibraphone. These people solved how to build a vibraphone. What? <laughs> so just like people, just like with use custom, don't use custom parts, use standard parts. So if we take that form from function idea, 
there are professional vibraphone builders in the world. Did you know that, Hannes 3000? What? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I always build my own vibraphones. <laughs> 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 Which is funny because it's true. And, uh, and uh, so... But this will make the uh, Marble Machine X huge, which leads us to point four. We're already at point four, my friends. Um, that would never happen again, you said. The mold? No, that was now deliberate. Now it was occasional. That was deliberate. It was deliberate. In, in, intentional, you mean. Okay, there we go. So, um, yesterday, we are going to look at some sketches that me and Sir 3K made yesterday. Um, <laughs> here's my latest um, artwork, because I learned to use opacity in Procreate. Um, okay, <laughs> these are some. So let me go through this. Um, well, yeah, yeah, take it slow. Okay. We need to like go through what we were talking about. Why did we sit and sketch for a couple of hours after the last stream yesterday? Yeah, it started here, I think, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Basically, context. Mid air collisions. We start one, even one step back here. The first two machines have 11 notes and um, actually on the original machine those boxes are not even replaceable. I just took, there's actually only one scale. You can't play other notes on the first machine. I That machine, I never thought of that actually. So you, you can actually only play those exact 11 notes. <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of crazy it's like I think it's like uh, those are the notes I think uh, no it's no that was how it was Yeah, it's hard to even play because I'm... I, so, first machine can only play 11 notes, you can't replace them. Second machine to the right, the idea was that we have 11 notes again. Um, and about that, like when you see these two machines, you see like they're too similar. I just tried to build the same machine with the same dumb design requirements with better techniques. And that were that's... Fun fundamentally where Marmachin X went wrong from the very beginning. Um, I took, like in the end of the less dumb design requirement video I made last autumn, um, there's this um, computer developer who talks about shifting perspective and not taking things for granted, how things have been done before. And as you can see on this image, Marmachin X takes too much for granted from the first machine. And also, Hannes talked a lot yesterday about the soul of this machine. The DNA. The DNA, you said. Yeah, yeah. that was the word. And as much as we love these machines and we love the look of them, since we're applying form from function absolutism for the third machine, since we want to build something that works, we have to cut ourselves loose. Because on the second machine, to cut to the chase, the vibraphone plates are exchangeable, but the resonators should then be tuned and let me just show you quickly how um, impossible that was um, so yesterday I, I I went into this <laughs> craziness yeah so 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 the idea um, I just have to fix this by clicking save as that's an that's a glitch the idea was to tune these resonators this is a vibraphone of the Mar machine X there is no space to tune them so this was the second, like, we don't have the physical space. Why? Because we designed the machine in the wrong direction. We started with the frame. Yeah. So, like, people always ask, like, um, why did you why did you give up the Marble Machine X? Here's why. Uh, so one of the points is there are no space for resonators. Basically, this machine would also 
hardly be able to play one song. Never be able to play two songs on a live stage. Because there's just no space for tunable resonators. So, um, that's a long preamble to just like say that these two machines are like fundamentally flawed and whatever we do on the third machine we should do something that doesn't end up in the same dead ends so then we're coming up to uh let me press this button i think yes if i go over to here then we're here so yesterday i was trying to push everything into a small space to all the instruments on top of each other. And then someone said in chat, have you thought about mid-air collisions? And I was like, yeah, yeah, and that's not a problem. Wait, <laughs> that's a huge problem. So basically, if you see the red marbles that hitting the back row, they will be in the way for the green and the blue marbles. Yep. Um, and this was also after the decision to go for a full-scale vibraphone on the new machine as well. That's why we have so many bars this time. Yes, or or we didn't make that decision yet, but we're we've been we've been uh, toying around with toying that. Toying around with it. It's my dream to have a full scale vibraphone. Um. So then we're like, oh god, and also having the drums in front. Um, like the plan is. Um, let me see. Um, this is so annoying. Um. Here we go. So to have the drums in front, you will then have this. Um, so if you want to play this, these two notes, you have marbles passing straight over this drum. So you basically have to navigate mid-air collisions. And I just totally forgot that about that, which is kind of funny. And this realization about the 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 mid-air collisions open up kind of a totally new design space and that's where we are today so let me let's look at what we sketched yesterday night after the live stream so this was actually from the stream one idea is to just make the machine like monstrous monstrously wide ginormous yeah and to put the drums there on the left and here's the bass in the middle and then, um, <laughs> and then we realized that there's a, one person whose name is Ralph who sent in like this multi-machine sketch. And all of a sudden, like we started to play around, like if we are not stuck in everything in one machine, why not just make instrument modules like this? So the red things are bowden cables and we have a big programming wheel in the middle and then you have kind of have a drummer to the left and a vibraphone player to the right and a bass player and conductor of the mechanical orchestra in the middle and this is of course a totally different dna this is like going from a bird to a fish this is not like another species of species of bird um like if i do this you can see these are like a crow and a penguin Peng <laughs> <laughs> no, another bird. Penguin is like crow and a, I don't know. And crow a, and a seagull. Crow and a crow and a seagull. And if we go here, this is kind of a T Rex or um, a dog or something. So it's it's another family of uh, marble machines. Um, here's another idea: drummer to the left, vibraphone to the right, bass in the middle. And the joke that we had before that the floor becomes the funnel, like I was actually thinking you can just have the floor being the funnel and just angle it a little bit back to the machine. And then you can just let the marbles bounce out in free space. So here we were like thinking uh, completely free. Here's a top view, putting the drums on another... Um, I know chat has been all about this, like moving the drums to the side or the back. So chat is going to be happy to see we're considering stuff like this. Yeah. Everything is on the table right now. Yeah. And um, so something that I will, I'm going to jump ahead and make a note in my decision matrix document here, which is blown out 
at, at yours because this is not graded. So we'll see if this works. I'm just making a note here, acoustics, because um, leakage from snare, uh, snare to vibraphone. So um, one of the design requirements that I know that I, I am sure about, uh, let me hit this. I have more sources today. There we go. Is that I want this machine to be able to sound good acoustically. The further we move the snare drum, especially away from the vibraphone, the less the sound of the snare drum will leak into the vibraphone microphones. Um, because they're, they're exactly in the same frequency. 3000K, 3K, uh, like you are, Ooh. like you. <laughs> yeah, I'm as annoying as a snare drum. Exactly. Yeah. Or as sharp and bright. <laughs> yes. And good sound. I'll take it. In your voice is, is, is as good sounding as a well-tuned vibraphone and snare drum at 3K. Oh. So the more distance we can separate them, that's just one thing that I will grade later when we make our decision matrix. And let's go on this way. So here's another idea. Three, this is very craftworky, craftwork, but it's also, it takes away something from the DNA. It's another family. Yeah. But perhaps, because what I know, if we built this, what you're seeing on the picture, I know this will sound and work the best. I'm dead sure about that. Um, will it be hard to transport? I think like, um, uh, what's the German metal band with a lot of props with fire? Rammstein. Yeah, Rammstein. I think this will fit. Uh, this is going to be one thousandth of what Rammstein is bringing on tour. So... <laughs> Uh, and I definitely have ambitions of being one thousandth of as famous as a Rammstein. So I think it will work. Okay. <laughs> um, here's another one. Just one wheel in the middle and the vibraphone on the side. And here on the floor, here the floor is the funnel. So a big tarp kind of. Oh, the... tarp. Nice word. Just think of like an angled tarp. And you just, the, the marbles are just falling on this tarp back to the machine and being picked up and lifted up. Uh, up, up up somewhere um imagine having like a custom made Ooh, imagine having um okay i'm gonna go to the sketchpad real quick um i just had an idea now because the machine is so big imagine if we develop our own um plateau because i mean you do bring plateaus when, when you tour. So this is kind of the plateau. We have the flickering, I see. I'm gonna yeah, try to remove, re push it in and out there again. Yeah. Perhaps it will fix it. Flickering goes away sometimes. Yeah, mainly when we have current going through the cable. Yeah. Is it still flickering? Okay. Um, so just imagine that um, the machine, uh, well well done with the sketch, always, <laughs> um, is here. I'm just brainstorming here now. Vibraphone and drums and me here. And the marbles are just allowed to drop down. So the, the, this is like some sound material. And just they just roll down here. <laughs> the floor is the funnel. And here is just something. And they go back in under. And transport it under and comes up here on the other side. Basically, so you don't have to put a, up an ugly thing in front of the thing. Of course, then when you're playing in a small room, then you really have to have the audience running with the marbles back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the to the sketches from yesterday. Um, so, bass, drums, more, more compact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Area starting more and more to get back into one machine land again. Yeah, that was one of your feedback. Like here, it feels like this is something completely different than what we built before. It's not like one music box coming out, fantastic music out of this one thing. It's more of a like something crazy big, an orchestra more. Yeah. And then we try to like make it more compact here. 
and then gone to nature's ID to have the machine bike powered. Uh, <laughs> I heard from Hannes, which is sadly a brilliant idea. Sadly, a brilliant idea. But I just don't need to wear like a red clown nose to make this stage show work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it feels like biking the machine. It's just it is too much circus. It's just too much circus. I wouldn't be able to live with myself, I don't think. And as Hannes said, if the machine is bike powered, it needs to be able to move around on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Although Gon's nature, I think timing wise, I think yeah, you it would point. be brilliant. It would be brilliant. Mm, bike po- the bike powered idea is like the combination of of the pedal and a crank. Let's see what we have more. My dream requirement. Full size vibraphone, double release per note with two music programs. This means that we can play this. Imagine, yes, please. Imagine as an intro of the concert, we can play, we can play whatever a vibraphone player can play, almost. Yeah. Um, so this is my dream, um, and then. I was thinking about the mid-air collisions if we have two rows. And what I what I think is that only in very... So the bouncing, the timing is very predictable. So we will know exact what kind of music programming would be um, tricky. So if we go over to the, um, to the close-up of the, of the keyboard, maybe I have to fix the... No, it's it's sharp. So I think, for example, what we what will be tricky is to play a black note just before this note. However, this note just before this note would not be tricky because this bounces forward and this comes afterwards. So if you have a song like like our, our X files, this works. But if we would transpose it, this would not work. Which means that if we need this halftone interval at exactly the speed where we know there's a risk for a mid-air collision, we can just transpose the song uh, to get rid of um, black-white. Uh, because this, black ball bounces up in the air while white ball comes down to try to hit the key. So. No problem. So I think if we go back to the um, uh, CAD that for the vibraphone in itself, I think these mid-air collisions can be a non-issue. It will be a um, programming constraint that we'll, we'll know about. Because since the since we have so much control over the marbles, so the music programming pattern is very set um, we will just know how to avoid the collisions and it's only as I said a few on a few instances um, in a very specific rhythm so here is um, <laughs> <laughs> here is another design and this is interesting because we have some viewer suggestions that have been on to exact same ideas and you thought Hannes that we should break the wheel up and have it kind of maybe like two wheels and some viewer have put a uh, marble transportation in the middle there which yep. is very interesting so i'm back on the left side here like like in cad so basically this sketch is very much this thing these are the same instruments basically yeah and my idea behind that was if we don't want to have that gigantic wheel we can have split it up into two smaller ones because it really unnecessary real estate to have a such a huge wheel then. But we want the machine vi- wide if we want to fit all the instruments with the full range vibraphone and everything. So well, yeah, split it in the middle. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it it's a it's a um... easier for transport as well. Yahoo. Yeah, so this could. Also, here you mean these are two separate modules that you put together on stage. Is that what you mean? No. No, it's it's connected with the frame and everything. 
You just need a shaft between the wheels, I guess. So, but why would it be easier for transport, you mean? Because you can't put, because you have two smaller wheels, right? Oh, uh, for, for removing the wheel itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, like changing song here would take like a, a, a whole forklift kind of. Yeah, yeah, if we have one big. <laughs> now I'm with you. Transportation of the of the programming wheels yeah. themselves. I see your mug there. I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> I borrowed that mug for like a month. You haven't seen it for a while. Okay, let me go through with the presentation, and after point five, we're gonna hear what people in the chat think. Um, so, I started to think about. Um, Another design requirement. So now we're on the repeatability uh, thing. And I started to think about how to make two marbles drop on every plate. Because um, we can't play even the Marble Machine song without having um, two drops on that D note dropping very close to each other. So I started to think like we have inverted escapement uh, wheels here. And then uh, Hannes mentioned the Pac-Man gates again. This is exactly what we did on the Cyberbase. The only reason that was tricky was because we had the dampening plastic that gets stuck. So this can be done efficiently. And the reason I don't want to release the marble straight out of the Pac-Man's mouth is because of the speed, but that's something I want to return to and, and talk a little bit about later. Um, blah, blah, blah. Full size plus double drops, blah, blah, blah. Here's um, Pac-Man gate that would be visually, double Pac-Man gate that would be visually nicer because you would have an enormous waterfall. Imagine just an enormous waterfall of marbles in the front of the machine going down and then just dropping down on the vibraphone. So you have full visual contact uh, with the marbles. And um, that's all. So um, let's... Play one mole. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much buttons for you now, Martin. <laughs> we were every day. It was so fun with this uh, brainstorming section. Um, we were everywhere yesterday. So let's move over to point five suggestions from the viewers. Yeah. Which are actually really, really cool here. So um, then I have to go down. I have some new. Here we go. Um, so, vibraphone hammer jammer from Alfonso Samano. You can't see the whole thing. Let me try to fix that a little bit here. Keynote. Um, okay. Let me just see what I can do. <laughs> To show you a little bit better. Oh no, I can't do that. Okay, never mind. You have to explain it then. Um, so vibraphone hammer jammer. Okay, so Alfonso, we will get back to this suggestion because this is not really vibraphone place, marble funnel. Okay, so this is the hammer jammer for bass, but for the vibraphone. Um... Outside the box, I like it. Um, kind of disappointing to not see the marbles hitting the plates themselves. Yeah. It's almost better than... Another idea we had yesterday was to skip the marbles and just call it the mallet machine. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> to just play it with mechanical mallets yeah, yeah. everywhere. Imagine all the views, all the 150 views we would get on that video. But also, <laughs> form from function, right? If we really would take that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, um, everything on the table, okay? We have to... It's the John Cleese how to write a joke thing. Um, idea by Armor Arfa. Shoof! I'm an engineer right there. Um, every plug has its own length, depending on the note. Plugs for vibraphone resonate to pipes, so you don't have to panic with the pipes. Just make the pipes the same length and use plugs. 
Oh, so this is actually one of the, every note has its own length. This. So this is a solution for how to. Um, can I zoom in here? No. How to make the resonators tunable? I can actually do this. Um, this is the best design I've seen for how to make resonators tunable. Because it's highly repeatable, it's in and out with the plug. I've never thought of this before. Brilliant idea. AMR, ARFA, ARFA and Skill Stalker. Um, so this will actually come into play when we're writing our decision matrix for if we need the resonators to be um, tunable. This thing would um, make that possible. Well done. Um, here we go. Yeah, circular. Instruments in circular arrangement. Marbles drop like a waterfall. Much more space to work with. Marbles dropped from here, a circle. Marbles collected in scoops and fed back to top of the machine. Yeah, so here's some cool math. Radius of one meter, circumference of over six meter using two times pi radius from digger me up. So what happens when you do this is that you all of a sudden is gifted a lot of space and it's beautiful as well. We're back in... Um, this is pretty awesome in a way. It reminds me even more about like the anime music yes! stuff. <laughs> but if I would do this, I would demand to have the vibraphone plates moving. Ah, okay. This is not... This is not pure form from function. <laughs> okay, this is kind of brilliant. This is kind of brilliant. The snare drum is kind of far away from the vibraphone as well. Um... It would be a custom vibraphone. You would need an axle, which is bendable for the uh, vibraphone resonators. There is this uh, James Brute on YouTube channel who makes fantastic mechatronics that I've been looking at lately. And James Bruton has these cool one wheel balancing robots. In that mono wheel, James Bruton is using a bend axle. So that kind of axle. And I mean, Okay, I'm a little bit in love with this right now. Um, because of the Bowden cables, this would actually be possible. Hmm. And most of all, like the ugly... I'm, I'm going to try to do something. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. So just um, bear with me. Can you entertain the audience? Sir 3K, what are people no, that's saying? That's a tall order. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> people, oh, hashtag Team Circular is appearing now in chat here as well. Yeah. I'm going to try something. Alexander here. Entertainment, did Martin take the blue or red pill? And Dossy Beetle, I think he took both. <laughs> and Damien Villa, Martin wants to take all the pills. <laughs> 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 and yeah kind of that's where we're now that's where we're at now checking out all the different configurations we can do and like trying to find middle ground somewhere but something that was really clear when you and i discussed off stream uh, yesterday was oh you sent my yeah, I, ipad I, uh, yeah an image over here yeah i hope i didn't crash the stream uh no i think i can solve it yeah <laughs> i don't know we have to i don't know which one to send to now i have it here um yes yeah, so go ahead um you really 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 want to have the full range vibraphone so everything needs to come after that it is one thing that you were really in love with it was being able to have one fixed vibraphone with don't having to switch out everything, different resonator pies and everything. Keep it simple, stupid. Like have it on the machine. Yeah, I want, um, yes, I want to, oh my, oh, why? Oh, here. There we go. Oh, yeah, I think 
I think we saved the stream. We saved the stream. Imagine an image almost destroyed everything. <laughs> okay, so now Team Circular. Oh, a lot oh. of people. A lot of people here. Uh, team Circular. Okay. So let's go. Um, no, wait. I'm not really done yet. This I'm I'm working on my workflows here. Um, let's go to the sketch pad. Oh yeah. So now I can sketch on this sketch. Um, brilliant, right? Sketch on sketch. Um, so what I what I just realized is that because I think the the marble funnel would be so ugly, the one I've designed, but with a circular design like this, a circular funnel would be kind of beautiful. So think, imagine like this is a mosquito net or something. So imagine like this big cake. It's a musical birthday cake. Oh, yes. To celebrate everyone in the whole world. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't make individual funnels. I would just make it into like one huge thing. And I had to climb umber, un, under here. So I'm standing in this circle. Maybe that's ugly. Um, instead of this um, like uh, rectangular shape. Um, this is pretty epic. Uh, but it looks cool. But is it really form from function? Mm, yeah. And, and also... Isn't it always difficult with having no straight angles if you have an all circular isn't that something to think about <laughs> with no sharp corners almost every anywhere i think the bowden cables uh, it, it's 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 not the most straightforward uh, things it's more uh circular forward <laughs> Circle back. <laughs> and like if we go back to so we're gonna take this into the to to later, but if we go back to um to this, all of a sudden buying a perfect vibraphone goes all out of the window. So if we want to make a circular thing, we have to build it ourselves. Yeah. And a, a circle of full chromatic. Um, you know what? Let's sketch this a little quick. Um, let's make a new design. Uh -huh. Save. It's a it's a glitch. Circular vibraphone. Um, let's let let's just look how much space this would take. I need to go out of the keynote for you to see something. Let's make a vibraphone plate here. It is 350 long and it is 40 wide. 40 wide. And the circle is 800. So how many notes did we say? 37, right? 37, I think I remember, yeah. We don't want them all around. Um, yeah, you need to be standing somewhere. Yeah, and we need drums and stuff. <laughs> but let, let's see. Oh, it's exactly... Can you bring up the pipe dream? Of course I can. Oh. And a really generous super chat just came in from Mikkel Dam Junker. And he says, just love to have you guys as a background for my work day. Hannes 3K, make sure you get some nice lunch today. Thank you so much for the reminder. And yeah, I will make sure that we get something to eat <laughs> in time. <laughs> I've I've seen both we're both of us not a person to be with when we're hungry. No. It's like... I all of a sudden get really, really quiet. Yep. And then you know something's up. <laughs> something's up. I'm about to blow a fuse. So... S thank you so much, Mikkel. That's very generous of you. That's highly appreciated. Thanks for being here and thanks for keeping us company as well. 
um, we are honored by each and everyone hanging out with us in this very abstract thing, actually. And I think that's like, a no, it's so fun with internet that you don't need to dumb things down because if you're just honest and transparent with what you're trying to do, there will be people who are interested in the same things. It's kind of fantastic um, because this is so niche. So I want to make an angular pattern here. So oh, my zoom function is out. Um, let's, let's not do that. I'm just putting that, let's say we want the vibraphone over a 90 degree angle and I want 37 notes. And what's good here is that I can just click okay here. And now I can just increase the diameter until all these plates have clearance. There we go. Another generous, uh, super chat from food of feet fight. Vertical prog drum with a spiral marble lift. Maybe this MMX tower vertical idea will come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vertical program. Yeah, everything is Verti on the table. Vertical now. program with a spiral marble lift. Is this the one you wanted to see, my friend? Thank you for that suggestion. Spiral marble lift. I'm, I muted the sound. Yeah, hang on there. I'm just going to note down note down in in my I just I need a note pad for things like this I'm just gonna note down what was the name vertical prog drum with a spiral, spiral marble spiral lift. marble lift I think you mean um the same as Archimedes crew ah I'm I'm not sure Okay, so before we watch the video, I've just expanded so there's room for the plates. And right now, from here to here, it's one and a half meters. Um, so it's quite big. <laughs> uh, go big or go home. I mean, this would capture, like, this would be such a... Like, um, attention, this is so attention grabbing, like, this is like crazy attention grabbing, because you never basically see this. Crazy. Um, yes, go, go, go into the video and go a little bit forward. So this is the Animusic Pipe Dream. We're going to see when the circular vibraphone is folded up, it's like one minute more. Yeah, there, like a flower. Take it a little bit from, from earlier before it's folded up, because that's kind of awesome. Are we creating this for real now? Whoa. There it comes. <laughs> and look, the, the notes are lighting up and they are moving when being hit. And this is like another thing um can you pause it there i just have to just note this as well um here vibe plates moves when hit or not so i kind of promised myself that i wouldn't make the vibraphone plates move um but i also know that um with with having that design requirements from the beginning, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. But the it, function of it is only aesthetic. Fish. aesthetic. It's yeah. only aesthetics. Yeah. When you go back to that video, the plates are both shining up and moving when hit. And if they weren't, um, this would be bo totally boring. You would not even see the marbles almost bouncing on them. No, nah, you wouldn't understand anything. Clock, clock, clock. That's a cowbell. I love that. Okay. Um, so, if you can go to... Um, I think IBM built a real-world version. Can you go find that one? Like, real-world uh, pipe dream. And because their plates are not moving, and it's so boring. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, what is this? Okay. So, circular, team circular... Um, 
that it's a crazy it's a crazy idea let's keep that in mind let's go back to um, our keynote presentation of the viewer suggestions because that's where we are in the stream but let me see if this comes up I go home oh there you have it Intel here we go it's folding up here anytime here Yeah, they made they made it fold up, which is funny that they actually made that. Uh, can you go forward in the video? <laughs> they made it fold up. But look at this. Okay, so they have some kind of LED. Um, and also the balls are the same color as the plastics. Like Intel, do you know about contrast? <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> I'm... I'm like complaining with them. And they are using the floor as funnel, actually, because they're just letting the barrels uh, end up on the floor. Um, so I should probably not like um, be negative. They actually did this. It's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. But how how fun is it to watch the vibraphone being played, you think, sir, 3K? This is so boring. Like, look at the audience. They are, can you zoom in on the audience? No, I can't. Is there any music even? <laughs> Wow. They look bored. The audience looks so bored. I don't see even one person smiling. Wow. Because it's fake. It's like Howard Rourke in the Fountainhead. It's fake facade. This is not... Look at them. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Rock show! <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, um, oh, I'm getting, I'm happy today. Uh, I'm, I should not be, I should not be mean. It's cool that they did it. Yeah. Uh, good. They, actually, they actually did something that worked. My friends at Intel, A for effort, okay? Um, so let's go back to the keynote. Um, where am I? We're going to go here. So, uh, digger me up, awesome suggestion. Let's look forward. Here's something suggesting to just change pitch digitally. Is it against the morals of the MMX? Yes, because there's a design requirement that the vibraphone has to sound good acoustically and not after mixing. So so, so that goes against. But anyway, um, I can drag this to... No, I can't. Okay. I'm going to fix this later. This is from Danny Way. You can't see his name, but I say it Danny Way. Um, so what is the idea here? Also moving an instrument to the side, right? Yeah. I guess, right? Or having the marbles bounce. Oh, that's pretty creative to the... Um, to have the marble bounce behind. Um, yeah, tilting everything. Wait, can I... Oh, yeah, I can do this so you can see everything. Here we go. Um... The bounces happen behind. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this these suggestions are all like possible, and it's a great sketch, Danny. But it also shows us how convoluted everything is. Everything is on top of each other. We don't have space for what we're trying to do, and like it's really hard to 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 get this to work. I think. Um. Might not be only for Wireframe, but for all channels. Registrator turning star cog with quick latch to speed up, jump over. So this is a great idea by LS. Uh, and the speed of the registrators is not the limiting factor. The speed of the marble release is the limiting factor. So we need to drop a marble and then have another one takes its place, rest before it's dropped again. That's why I want double wubba woof <laughs> double almost in the coffee double um double marble releases this is uh, super beautiful gonsonator right is it gonsonator the yeah. artist can you play it's a video i think can you play it it should play when i go to the next maybe if you click it is it spinning oh oh look at that beauty So this is interesting because this is actually a more space efficient way to organize 
like first when I saw this, I was like, no, it's too, too crazy. But this is actually a very space efficient way because you have the hit points. This might be possible, Gonzo. This might be possible. The highest notes on the top. <laughs> oh, wait. Marble gates have to be arranged in the same pattern. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Interesting. Interesting, though. This Here is we go. Uh, so, um, I think... Sounds... I love this one. Yeah? I don't know what it is, but I, I, I really love this one. By Crafted by Orre. And uh, sounds like a Swedish username. Yeah, it can be. Or it's a bird. Um, and this is very, very similar. So 64. Let me just flip over to this. No, this actually. Yeah. So check this one with... Here. That's the same machine. So when when two people think of the same thing independently from each other, I, I always pay attention. And the conveyor belt in the middle there. That's brilliant. Yeah. So so that's what, what we tried to do yesterday evening with um, the tilted funnel here. It's kind of all the marbles comes up in the middle. Yeah. Um, so let's go back. This one again. It's a beautiful sketch as well. Yeah. In all its simplicity. Have all the instrument wide MM3. Have all the instrument laid out as columns. So no overlapping instruments. I think that's like where we're going, maybe. Top layout. So you have program 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 instrument, marble lift, and programming drum for drums. Bottom layout, bass, vibraphone, drums. Crafted by Aura. It's a beautiful... And... Perhaps this can be built in two modules. So they're actually separate, but you just screw them together on stage to be able to transport transport one by one. It's, it's, a, it's a great sketch, Aura. So thanks so much for sending it. And this is also fun, but... Uh, okay, I can make this a little bit larger... Do from I pull in. I pull in is taking this left thing and just bent it around, around the around the corner. Yeah, and also having vibraphone plates at two sides actually, which is kind of interesting. And this is also something very remnant of this. Yeah, moving stuff to the sides. Yeah. So this and the circular idea is actually the same idea, but without with a less like rectangular thinking. So this is kind of a circular idea in a way. So I pull in. Thanks so much for this. This is cool. Pen Pengu Linus. A net between the row of the vibraphone catches the marbles from the back rows. Rows are completely separated. Nets in the way of playing manually. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a bummer as 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 Linus writes here. So this would work, but I feel like restricting the marbles right away with a net. It's just you want the marble to jump free after playing a note, right? Um, and chat is reminding me yet again today. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday also. I I said it to you, Martin. As the chat has talked about, if we lean the back row, tilt it backwards so the marbles drop backwards in, on, into the machine almost. Like yeah. Instead of bouncing forward. So let me show you what would happen. Um, so here is front... This is the Marble Machine 3 playing forwards. Here's the Marble Machine 3 playing backwards. It's it just hurts too much visually. It's I know this is form from function, but it's also like not a lot of space there. To always be looking up underneath the vibraphone. So this is the main angle to film in. 
Uh, that's, but that's just the back row. Yeah, but for the back row notes then. Yeah. And then you have the resonator pipes coming out for like, no, I, for it, several reasons. It hurts your soul too much. Yeah, and it's not like, a, it's also fine. I, I don't think, I don't think it solves enough problems. Um, so this is fun. This is the Disoltone. I recognize this image from a Disoltone. Yeah, see, source YouTube Disoltone. So cool. Um, activate two gates with one pin. Use ballpoint mechanism. Um, activate two gates. From greeting Lucy. Thanks, Martin, for all your awesome work. Thank you from from uh, thank you, Lucy, for this awesome sketch. So this is one of my favorite Disultone episodes ever. Uh, push pull push push latch mechanism or something it's called. Um, you know when you open and close the glove compartment in a car, this is often the mechanism behind it. So you push it, and it's closed. You push it again, and it opens out. And so these kind of heart shapes are in in the magical workings behind that mechanism, which is kind of awesome. Goal, activate two gates with one pin. Use ball pen mechanism. Only ball pen mechanism has to be fast. So I've been thinking about something like this for muting on and off, but I don't understand really, Lucy, how you are implementing it in the machine. Would love to see another sketch where you also add like the programming pins and the marble drop. So I understand where in the machine So one, two, three, this I understand, but I don't, okay, maybe description, maybe it's in the sketch here. I have to read everything before I say I don't understand. Second linear motion to activate, first linear motion, activate gate one. Now I understand. Uh... Tricky, tricky. I think I understand. So the first programming pin would drop a marble from gate one and the second from a gate two. This might be genius, but I don't know how to implement it. Speaking about genius, we have a really nice uh, supportive little super chat here from Exploding at Dude. And the comment is two vibraphones, question mark. One each side will allow to have two vibra bars per note and also allow pan of the audio for each note. Pan by which side is played. Thank you so much for the comment. Um, so... If we double up the bars, the two vibraphones, then we have double vibraphones and we have double marble gates. If we can get two marble gates to hit the same plate, we have only double marble gates. So I think like from that functionality point of view, it's better to only have one vibraphone if we can manage. And as I showed before in the mid-air collision, within the vibraphone itself, I'm not worried about mid-air collisions. Um, but between vibraphone and drums, I'm more worried, so I want them separate, I think. But, but is the, uh, the point of allowing to pan the audio, that's correct, right? That's a very cool idea. Yeah. Um, now that the vibraphone is wider, the horizontal space under bars can be utilized for resonate pipes. Only lowest five notes are pictured, but there should be plenty of space for all pipes. Also, now majority of notes are fixed, and bounding cable allows flexible spacing. Can graduated bars be used for better sound? Graduated bars. Oh, are these the vibraphones with different width? From Matt S. Thank you for the suggestion. And I have to research here. So... If we go here, we go in here. So there are vibraphones that have different width. 
let's sort on price high to low. And I've played some of those vibraphones and it's crazy difficult because yeah, these look here. You see the the lower notes are wider than the higher notes. So let's see if that's what it means with graduated. Let me do a quick Googling. Um, what is graduated vibraphone bars? Gabriel Bartoloni moved the drum gate under the vibraphone. Hello. That's pretty genius. From what was the name? Gabriella? Gabriel Bartoloni. Gabriel, Gabriel Bartoloni. Move. That's yeah. Then we don't have mid-air collisions. Yeah. Ooh, no, we, we don't. So then then we need um very much space though. Cool cool idea. Understanding graduated bars. On any modern marimba or vibraphone, the bars are graduated. Put simply, this means that the bars of an instrument are at their largest both in terms of width and length at the low end, while getting progressively smaller as the pitch ascends. This is in contrast to glockenspiels or pianos. So you can clearly see that um, one octave at the lowest part of the marimba is like 22 inches and at the highest 16 inches. Um, the low octave is an entire seven inches wider than the top octave. Um, so when I check through, um, so these that I have are not graduated and will it make better sound on any modern marimba? The bars are graduated. So let's do a quick Google on that. Are graduated bars making better sound vibraphone um, they produce a more accurate and rich pitch what <laughs> say what ah the magic airy sound of the vibraphone <laughs> oh great start let's ah. go into this come to think about it how come the sound of the vibraphone is so unique Yet so many people mistake it for other instruments from his family. Like the Marine Border Salophone. Yes, I've had this problem too in my life. I know what you're talking about. I'm gonna head out quickly, Martin. Yeah. BRB. Um, but we're not talking about the tone bars. Here. Graduated versus non-graduated. This is exactly what I want to look at. Graduated vibraphone have bars whose width varies depending on the note. Non-graduated vibraphone tone bars have all the same width. Um, graduated bars produce a more accurate and rich pitch. Um, Non-graduated bars allow for more compact vibraphones. Um, according to most vibraphonists, this feature is a no-brainer. If you can afford it, absolutely go for a graduated vibraphone. The sound and feel is miles better than a non-graduated one. The only reason you'd ever go for a non-graduated vibraphone would be if you need a smaller vibraphone or if you're on a tight budget. Uh, kudos to this website for giving us this so succinctly. Uh, I'm going to go into the design uh, requirements here and just note vib plates graduated versus non-graduated and then this is why i love doing these live streams so much because from this one uh, oh sorry for the sound from this one suggestion from matt s which had nothing to do with graduated or not uh, the decision itself just because you mentioned this matt 
you've changed pro probably the direction of this whole design. I've hated playing on graduated vibraphones myself because I was just so used on physically having the same space between all the bars. But now I'm hearing that there is a better sound with graduated. This changes a lot. Um, this changes actually a lot because if we would use um, commercial vibraphone um, like this, we would not have the same center center distance um, between the marble gates, um, which maybe says that we should build our own vibraphone or buy a vibraphone and steal the parts from it, like buy a vibraphone and cut, just steal the, maybe cut the vibraphone open and put it in a circle or something. Which would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Oh, imagine like using professional resonators, but place them in a circle. Mmm, okay. Let's keep on going. We are still at the suggestions. You had left a lot of great suggestions. We're not even in the decision matrix yet. Uh, for vibraphone rows, let me pull this a little bit bigger. From Max Dust Basics. Um, For vibraphone, machine played, program played, both machine and manual playable. Um, in choosing the number of vibraphone rows, you could use different colors of vibraphone plates. This would allow two rows with the same number of plates as they're using less space. Different colors, easy to play in person, um, more free area for drums. Cons if this is chosen, max number of plates is less. Yeah, so this is super good, Max Dust Basics, to use the room um, between the black keys. Only problem is that if we need to make them removable, we are in a big, big um, problem. Love the sketch. Um, I wonder if it's real markers or if it's on, on a sketch pad. Um, Here's from Patrick Decke. For repeatability, you can double the registrators and marble drops. Um, there will be a sh phase shift delta plus one and marble. F okay, I have to read. I have to read slower. For repeatability, you can double the registrators and marble drops. Yes, there will be a phase shift delta plus one, marble fall time difference delta plus two. So it will be paint to program but the speed would be double. Program wheel top. It is nice to have both of you back from Patrick Decky. Nice, nice to have you here, Patrick Decky, giving a brilliant suggestion. You know what? This is basically, in, my, in the back of my mind, this is my plan to do exactly, um, to do exactly what you're suggesting. Um, we need to fix the, difference in height and stuff like that. But a full-size vibraphone with the double drops is my big holy, holy grail. Here we go. From Thomas K. Move sections a bit further apart from each other to allow for felt-coated catcher placed to be vertically between sections. Manual play would still be possible if each plate was either removable or no higher than needed to catch the first bounce. So this is a continuation of um, this idea. So both Linus and um, Thomas had this idea and I think it would work, but again, it would be like a big shield in front of everything like this. I would like to avoid that. And here's Tim Schaeffer, two for a double drop, two wheels on same escapement, faster load time may increase throughput of gate and may use same dropper. Possible downsides, less rotation per tooth. Yeah, so this would not hold the marbles as securely and give um, so basically what you have done here is basically a double gate um, but you put it in one gate. So I, I, think, I think the idea is correct but I think just making two gates is, is the more practical solution. Drum, resonator pipes, vibraphone. Okay, resonator pipes between the drums. We talked about that in the beginning of the project. 
that's still an option. I would like to avoid it, but but it's still an option. So thanks for that sketch. And I'm missing a slide that we prepared before the live stream. The last slide. Why is it not here? Let me go get it for everyone. Sir 3K has left the building. He will be back very, very soon. Talking about the trolls, I'm hearing something behind me. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find the slide from Ralph. Okay, do you want me to find it for you? No, no, it's, it should be in... It was in other, right? Mm, yeah. Can be. Look, Martin, no, uh, no electrics. Oh, the new one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's in other. So... Image submission template. Oh, now I realize Alfonso has made the template. Great. Um, okay. So, one second, everyone, and I'll get these slides in as well. Um, so, this is kind of cool. Alfonso Samana has made an image suggestion template which people can then use to uh, standardize their suggestions. Love this idea, Alfonso. I'm going to create an official one. And thank you so much for giving us this idea. Brilliant idea. Um, here's from Alfonso. Um, in the spirit of no bad ideas. MM3 Junior, MM3 Registrators, detachable row of MM3 Junior Registrators, front view, roll run drum, bounding cables, MM3 Junior. Yeah, so this is, this is actually the multi-instrument idea that we're going to show soon from Ralph as well. Program installer from Alfonso, programming, roll drum over to install. Okay, another way to reprogram that's a little bit out of the scope of this stream. Gussets, I mean the other category here, so this is, I'm going to redo, and there's a video, we're going to watch that in another stream. Modular MM3, so by Mr. Burns. This is the same idea again. Uh, so a vibraphone and plus a drum, Franken MM. Um, everyone's using some nice texture. You don't see it in the stream, but there's a nice texture paper behind here. So this is the same idea. I'm seeing this idea from quite a lot of people. It, I, I kind of like it. It's so much form from function. And I know that this is Hannah's favorite suggestion. I mean... Uh... I vote for that. You can see the the best part is if you look where the marble's coming from. I just spit them out from my mouth there. <laughs> Wahoo! And just the marble fly, flies out. I've given the strict uh, request to not post memes, but people know that when they include Sir 3K memes, it will come through anyway. <laughs> that's the loophole. Okay, some mini cameras. That's a good one. 3D printed MMX frame from Magnus Sørensen. Use generative design to create a frame for the MMX machine, then pair up with relativity space to 3D print a frame with their larger, large space graded metal 3D printer. That's such a cool idea, Magnus Sørensen. Very custom, very expensive, but a fantastic idea. And here, Ralph, who was the first person to submit a sketch from this idea. Look, Martin, no electrics. Um, there is something to this. There, this is where we started the stream. Uh, the, the, the DNA of the machine is severely altered here. But I love this uh, sketch you made, Ralph. And because it's really clearly show, showing the advantage and the form from function. Ralph has even a Hyatt machine here to the left. Um, love this sketch, Ralph. Ralph W. Um, so this is like the segmented m approach where things are not on top of each other. And yeah, I love it. You know what I love? 
No. Fredrik Haraldsson. I truly love that man. Just came in with a generous super chat here. I wanted to uh, bring his idea to the table here. Yeah. Love the project. If you plan for two channels per vibra plate, could you use two different type of marbles or different drop pipes for two different sounds when you hit the plate? Soft slash hard hit. So very, very, very good comment. I'm going to go straight into our uh, design requirements and make a note here because um, here we are. Um, vibraphone dynamics question mark uh, hard soft hits question mark so um, like in MIDI you have 127 steps so I can play soft or hard which makes it so much more musical like volume is so important <laughs> That's kind of nice. Uh, volume. It's important. <laughs> so I would love to have dynamic uh, vibraphone. This is going to be a hard one to implement, but thank you so much for, for the support and for the good comment. This is something... Uh, I want to be able to play things like... And then you don't want every other ball to be hard, soft, hard, soft, hard, soft. So... It has to be achieved some some in some other way. Um, I've seen some like one idea if we go to the sketch pad. Um, I'm a little dera derailed from the decision matrix by all the fantastic suggestions, but that's a luxury problem to have. So imagine if the vibraphone is here. And we have a slide ball. Oh, I'm gonna show you something. Oh! <laughs> I learned how to use layers. Um, and I learned that I can do the opacity down. And I learned that I can fill. And if I hold down, I can. it becomes straighter like that. Mmm, beautiful. And then I can just drag the color to fill this. That went, that went south. <laughs> Here we go. Full opacity on the layer. Hold it. Make it straight and nice. Fill that. And then lower the opacity on the layer. Here we go. So, I learned some new sketching um, things. And then I can also go here and I can free move this. Look at this. I can. So, imagine that this is a thin layer, a felt or a fabric. And with the turn of a lever, you move it down over the hit points. So now the marbles are hitting a kind of a thin, thin fabric. And it's softer. And you can even make this fabric in steps. So here is like the softest. And you take it back and you have full sound here. So I think this, to make dynamic of the vibraphone, instead of um, making the dynamic on the marble side... I think it could be done with this dynamic uh, felt. What do you think? Baboom! Baboom? Baboom. I think if I... If I do this... Di oh, never mind. So that's, that's, um, that's, th that's an idea. Um, okay, everyone. That was a huge detour into... Can, not, not a detour, oh, sorry. Can we just Street quickly... Chat reminded me, just check Discord really quick. So there's two different ones from Ordinary. Yeah, full size off the shelf vibraphone. 
angle the marbles onto the black and white keys in opposite directions with the vibraphone sitting level. Okay, that's cool, but then we have to capture... Uh, that's the best idea so far, I think, for for playing backwards, because you would still see everything. And then also, how to use less tracks on a full-size vibraphone. Shift them to the notes needed as per requirement of the song. Movable marble gates. So you slide the whole gate situation. Wow. Yeah, that is... With the bounding cables, it's actually possible. Okay, so full size. Hmm. Okay, that, yeah. So thanks for both of those suggestions. And please, if you want to be part of the archive, also submit them to Dropbox. Yeah, it's easier for us to go through them in those folders. And here we are, my friends, uh, with fantastic uh, suggestions and uh, love being all over the place here. There we go. Um, so... <laughs> we are done with row number five and um, we're gonna play that mall because we're going over to the decision matrix almost going into into roll again um, let's now with all this start to work on our decision matrix um, let's venture into the matrix everyone yes oh, yes and I started here. So we're going to go back to this great uh, lesson here. So um, step one, brainstorm the evaluation criteria appropriate to the situation. If possible, involve customers in the process. Um, so criteria is this top row here. So let's go over and we put criteria here. And then over here in the other row, problems. I think they have problems here. This decision making uh, matrix is for about making restaurant customers wait less. Um, and I think I want to have in this row, um, I think I want to have solutions. This is. So I, I think I want solutions here. Or designs. Designs maybe. Yeah, we're gonna shoot okay, so yeah. So we're gonna choose this decision matrix is to help us choose between different des design options is in this column. So criteria is here. Let me mark that with some orange. And the sign options is here. Let me mark that with some green. So we just see uh, the different things. Um, then, oh, they should be in the same. Um, now I see. Now I see, I'm gonna move this over to here. Um, they should actually be in one. Okay, never mind. Um, let me let me redo that. Um, so let's talk about our. Now we have to learn what we're going to put into this decision matrix. Um, discuss and refine the list of criteria. Identify any criteria that must be included and any that must not be included. Reduce the list of criteria to those that the team believes are most important. Tools such as list reduction and multi-voting may be useful. So this is a whole process in itself to find these criteria. So let's start... Um, adding a criteria. So what could that be? Um, 
note range. I'm taking my first two most important ones. Note repeatability. The ability. So, and also important, I, we have to make the criteria. If we're giving a high points later, so we give 10 points for something that is good, we cannot have a criteria that is inverted where 10 means bad. So I'm going to put here um, transportability. So I can't put size. If I put like larger size, it's probably bad, right? So uh, ease of transportability. Ease of transport um, is one. So help me out, chat and Sir 3K. What other criteria do we have? Uh, oh. So this is vibraphone design decision matrix. Yeah, vibraphone. So we have um, uh, so ease of song change. Yeah. Ease of song change. Do we have some ergonomics for you when you want to play it manually? Is that a criteria? Oh, good, 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 good. good. E manual play, manual playability. Perfect. Anyone in the chat has something to add here? Let's see if chat will oblige. Leakage. E yeah, uh, volume uh, acoustic leakage. Acoustic leakage, I think they mean. Ease of manufacture. Great one. From Method Diver. Ease, ease of manufacture slash supply. Uh, Casadan note tuning. But is that perhaps an ease of change songs? I don't know. Yeah, th th that one is great, but it's included in ease of song change. Yeah. So, so you can f just to go ahead, if we, for example, use something like this, just like it is, the ease of song change will be 10 because we don't need to do anything. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of people saying repairability. 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 Good uh, one. Looks. Because then we can have low scores. <laughs> looks. Uh, what about the whole resonator pipe situation? What can we call that? Um, you mean... The routing of the resonator pipes? Yeah, is that maybe in ease of transport? Cost, someone said here. Cost is a nice one. Cost. Um, uh, Damien McCallack, amount of oomph. <laughs> <laughs> How's um, Gurky? How easy it is to mute? Uh -huh. Oh, but that's 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 um, that's a good marble gate. Ease. Ease of marble gate positioning. Positioning. Collisions. A good one. Collisions. Oh, I have too long. I have Resonator to. locatability. Someone said here. Satish Kumar. Collisions. Um, mid air. Sorry for this. Made air collisions. Um, so resonator placeability is um, and is it ease of ease of a s because sorry I'm interrupting. We have to see if we need like s this category ease of positioning on the machine. Like I want the whole thing. So the re resonator thing is valid it should be here but is it maybe inside ease of manufacture so the resonator positioning um no maybe the foot foot maybe footprint how should we like how much space does it take basically 
Um, Volume. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's um, mass. Yeah, I think I think that's included size. in the reason. Yeah, size. But we have to make this positive so the score doesn't get inverted, which means um, ease of size, ease of. Mm, so how do you turn it into something good? Ease of compactness, like <laughs> compactness. <laughs> Compactness. Compactness. I, I think that will... will Streamlineness. Will, yes. I think that will capture um, the resonators and everything. And I have glitches everywhere here. Well, we're in the matrix, aren't we? <laughs> ah. Fill color. Is this the one? Yes. Okay. Which, which else did you have? Uh, I just wanted to remind her uh, from, like, for example, Krambaninovi. Looks aren't a requirement. Why add a column for that? An angry face, I guess. Because then we can see that looks aren't important, right? What was the name of the chatter? Uh, Krambaninovi. Krambaninovi, I think you're correct. I, I was cringing a little bit when I added the looks. Delete column. Okay, but in my mind, I was like, okay, we can get that really low score. But that's not how it works. Because looks aren't important. Um, so. Well. If choosing between to apples and apples and looks would make the difference then we will choose the thing that is inspiring is looking inspiring so um weight i'm gonna take it back because in the i saw that you add weight look here so we haven't gotten into that step so if we if we if we go in um you see there's a five there um Customer pain five, ease to solve two. These are weights. So they have weighted how important each criteria is. So um, um, assign, that's in step three, assign a relative weight to each criterion. Let me see if I can show you there. Here. So I think looks should be in here because it's such a big part of design. Uh, but what we're going to do, and you're completely correct about that, we're going to assign it a low weight. <laughs> so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to insert um, a row below. And here's going to be criteria weight. So for looks, let's put a 1 already there. So there's no, multi there's no multiplier on the looks. And... Um, they also say that we should have a short list. So I'm thinking maybe we should not try to just make this list endless. Note range, note repeatability, ease of transport. Instead of acoustic leakage, we should do acoustic quality. Quality. So take all the acoustics in mind here. Manual payability. Yeah, sir, 3K. No. Did you have something? No, no. no. Ease of marble gate positioning, mid-air conditions, compactness. And to make this look a little bit better, I can put all the text standing up. Uh, like this. Um, then we can just tighten everything up. A little bit. So we can really create a matrix. Ah, oh, see where you're going now. <laughs> the decision matrix. We have to live. <laughs> we have to live up to the thumbnail. What happened with the K? There was nothing here. Or is there? If I do this. Compactness. 
So, and I'm going to center all these. So we have a center line. Um, let's put them a little bit. We can maybe shift them according to weight. We can shift them over, perhaps. Damien Vila, noise. Where's noise? <laughs> noise. Um, noise is part of acoustic quality. Yep. Um, so let me try to clean that up by removing, delete these columns. Um, let's let's start with the green thing a little bit because then everyone will know better where we're going with this. Uh, so um, discuss and refine the list of criteria. Identify any. This is what we've been doing. Identify any criteria that must be included and any that must not be included. Reduce the list of those to the, the team believes are most important. Three, assign a relative weight to each criterion um, based on how important that criterion is to the situation. This can be done in two ways. A, um, A, by distributing 10 points among the criteria based on team discussion and consensus. Oh, 10 points for all of them. By each member assigning weights, then the number for each criterion for a compositive team weighting. Um, so what they did in their example uh, over here is that they distributed 10 points. Um, let's try to do that. So looks... Um, only gets one point, maybe even zero. Then, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, we don't have enough. We have too many criteria. Criteria. So note range. I'm just gonna start somewhere. It's just an individual thing. So I will give that a five. Note repeatability a five. Ease of transport a three. Ease of sound change a four. Manual playability a two. Acoustic quality five. Ease of manufacturer supply two. Repairability three. Looks one. Cost two. Ease of marble gate positioning uh, three. Mid air collisions, one or two, right? Um, yeah, inside the inside the vibraphone. Yeah, it's two. It's funny because I'm already thinking that I want a full. Like, like I'm so biased when I do this, um, so I'm already weighing this to make the decision matrix give me the option that I already want, which makes it this whole exercise useless, which is kind of funny. But there's no way to get out of my bias. <laughs> but we're going to chance because I'm I'm biased towards a full size vibraphone, but maybe not the circular vibraphone. We'll see. Compactness uh, three or is it a four? Compactness. Yeah, how small it is. So basically, I just made my own system up here. I weighted between one and five. So these are going to multipliers. And let's go in, um, start on the design options here, just so everyone knows where we're <coughs> going. And I'm al also a little confused myself with how we're going to do this. Um, so I wanna exclude this and put it here. Um, I wanna have them here. Move the green here and then just put the sign options here. Uh, da -da 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 -da, bold. So, what are our design options? What have we been talking about? So let's do let's do like eleven note MMX style. Mandracula, what was the name? Mandracule. 
Mandracule yes. module. We have um, full size, full size um, of the shelf vibraphone. Um, single dropper. We have full size of the shelf vibraphone. Double dropper. So we can just make like a, we can also make like a 22 note MMX style Mandracule module. What else do we have, Hannes? And chat. Um, circular. Yeah, the circular. Circular full size. Vibraphone, we have circular uh, 11 note vibraphone. A split up vibraphone, half in the middle and a half on the side. So it's that 90 degree idea. Yeah, I think so, right? Um... Let me remove this column. Let me remove this row. <sighs> Maybe this should be centered. No. What else have we been looking at? Oh, we've been looking at um, oh yeah. So I, w I was thinking like, should it be one machine and stuff like that? That's not what the, this decision matrix is about. This is like to find out how many notes and how fast I can repeat and how fast I can change songs. So I, I feel as though we have the full size um, on the vib on the full size vibraphone the marbles would not actually clear uh, so easily so we would need to like take it apart anyway um, Andre Novella, mid air collision should fall under playability or reliability. It's a sub criteria, not a main one. That's an interesting feedback. Um, reliability and is maybe missing. An OX3F. To the mid air collisions are critical, but it should be reliability in general. Okay, good, 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 good. Reliability, great. Rely, uh, reliability. Um, I'm gonna give that a five. Um, so reliability, uh, including mid air collisions. Um, Let's move looks over to the last uh, row. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move them in the order we have uh, weighted them. Acoustic quality. This reminds me of a sorting algorithm video that. Probably many people in this. Have you seen the sorting algorithm with the sound? I'm sure a lot of people here are nodding their heads <laughs> in because I know that you clicked on that thumbnail when you said, I love that video. The sorting algorithm, um, it sorts with different algorithms. People know what I mean. 
here we go, ease of transport. This looks pretty nice. So, oh, we have a result column I'm missing. Um, insert column to the right. Um, res or total. Total. So, I'm going to take away the color here. My menus are done. So, total. Oh, I have to zoom in, zoom out a little bit. Here we go. Um, you can see that I, I don't see the options up here. There's a, it's a, it's a glitch. Yeah, it's some kind of glitch. It's a glitch in the matrix, everyone. And we're glitching everything. Total. Oh, that was oversized and nice. So, design options. 11 note MMX style, 22 note MMX style, full size off the shelf, single dropper. Oh yeah, I, I should add single dropper on all of them. Circular, full size vibraphone, double dropper. Um, circular, 22 note, double. I'm just gonna say that all these are double. Um, or should I ever have single and double for each and every one of them? Hmm. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky. Cody Combs, remove compactness. It's covered in ease of transport. Yeah, so, so I was thinking about that too. And the way I see it is that compactness is ease of engineering, kind of. Um, it's not exactly the same thing. So ease of marble gate positioning. So I, I think this is a wrong. So what we want to cover here is that resonator pipes space have space, basically. So the compactness is the wrong word. Um, ease of design in regards to space and space requirements and footprint. Baboom. Ease of design in regards to space requirements. Perhaps. What about that? There we go works I'm gonna give this another color Whew. that's our start of the decision matrix um, we are actually coming up to our lunch break mm -hmm. here and um, we are actually done with point six boom Ooh. And um, this is super fun to learn. I, I do think this tool will be very interesting. I think that currently our um, design options in green here is not... I want to go through them again and really think about what should be there. And then we're going to score. And we're going to give the score a multiple from the weight. And we're going to have a total here later and i think we're gonna do that after lunch so is this one of those days where we just add a pause screen uh, yeah we could try that i think we have something some old thing lined up yeah a 60 minute uh... so i think there's no use to actually uh, make a second live stream because we're just going to continue on this work after lunch yeah and so thanks to everyone for brilliant suggestions and we'll be back um so leave this stream up and i will try to add some music as well for you to listen to fantastic in the meanwhile and we see you after lunch then so do you, are we do you have it ready now kind of yeah awesome i will uh, i will tinker with it fantastic so see you all after the break
Hey everyone. Let's start off a little slower. Prematurely. It's 20 minutes left. But you're not. You know what? We're full after eating, but we're so hungry with getting this thing on, right? And thirsty. Thirst for revenge. It's burning in my mouth. Hannes 3000. And I think we're getting closer because in front of us, we're watching the beautiful decision matrix that we've been working on today. So this is a decision-making tool that gives criteria on one um, direction up here and design options on another, um, I'm missing the word for what it's called, column right here. And we had to pause before getting into the action in itself. And during the break, I've been working on these design options. So up into the right, you can see that we are halfway through this task for this stream. And now we are going to fill in the matrix to see what kind of result we will have. It's well, exciting. Let's dive deeper into the decision matrix. <laughs> yes, everyone. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so in these red lines, we have weight. And it's the weight of these criteria. I've been thinking, I think a scale one to five is excessive. I think it should be one to three. So um, there is uh, different method, me methods. I can't also speak. Um, <sighs> if I can't speak, why am I expecting to learn how to use a decision matrix? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so by, so there there are different um, versions here. Um, and I made up my own, which is maybe stupid. So I'm going to use revisiting how to make these weights. By each member assisting, yeah, we can't do like that. A relative weight to each criterion based on how important that criterion is to the situation. <clears throat> so the way they have done it here is that they have um, said there is 10 points total, divide them over your criterias. Since we have more than 10 criterias, um, I was kind of turned off from that idea. Um, so I'm going to do my home cooked version, but I'm going to reduce the spread by changing the max weight to a three. Okay. And then, so it's only going to be, so I'll go from the back here. Cost is also going to be a one. Ease of manufacture, two. Ease of design in regards to space requirements. Maybe, maybe I'll. Hmm. Maybe I'll leave that as a three. Ease of song change. Two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think you could do that. Let's do two. Ease of transport, two. Repairability, two. Ease of marble gate positioning. Two, and I think I'm gonna leave this as a three. So let me see if I can grab this column and move it to the left. And Martin, do you know what scores the highest points available? Kinetic fingers. Slice of Sparta, <laughs> <laughs> who just joined the chat here with a beautiful little support here, uh, saying it's quote-unquote boring tools like a decision matrix that makes the difference between possible and plausible. I absolutely love it. Keep up the great work. And thank you, as always, Slice of Sparta, for your generous support. I, and I also love your blurb, I think it's called in English, the quote right there, difference between possible and plausible, Ooh. which is actually really, really nice. So... That's very inspiring to hear, actually. Um, I'm going to fix, uh, so you can see a little bit better, I'm going to resize uh, here so we have a better screen to show you. Ba ba boom. Uh, vibraphone decision matrix. And we're going to end up with a total score here in the red. Um, there in the red. Let's make them a little bit more red. <clears throat> Let's try to get into it. So what kind of points are we going to give? So I'll go back to the um, tutorial and I go, I zoom out a little bit. Um, 
So, evaluate each... Now we're on uh, point number five. Evaluate each choice against the criteria. criteria. So let me... Uh, yeah, this is a better view. Method one, establish a rating scale for each criterion. Some options are A, one, two, three. One means slight extent, two, some extent, three means great extent. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. We have low, medium, high. One, four, nine, low, moderate, high. It's important that your rating scales are cons cons consistent. Word your criteria and set the scale so that the high end of the scale, five or three, is always a rating that would tend to make you select that option. So we already did that. This means that higher scores is better. Yep. And I tend to want to use, I think I want to use one, two, one, one, two, three, four, five here. Um, so let's see if we're going to read a little bit more here before we start to um, make the decision. Yeah, the decision. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to use this method one here and we're going to use option C, the one, two, three, four, five. But let's get straight into it. Um, let's not beat around the bush. Let's dive <clears throat> deeper into the matrix. Follow the white rabbit. Here we go. 11 note MMX style um, um, mandracule model single drop. Well, 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 well. So I want to automatically calculate the scores. Um, <laughs> note range. You have a three. Um, yeah, I, I just have to think if we can input the thing here. So, do I need really to have uh, another row below to just to make the calculation? So if I if I if I give this a five, I want this uh, to be fifteen, so we can make a total here. I think that's the easiest uh, way to set it up. Um, so I'm going to do a uh, sum. So this cell is uh, multiplied by this cell. We have 15. Yes. And then we're going to do this. And then here is the sum of all these points. Nice, nice, nice. And Mike Perry says, good morning from the States. Let's go. And it's Mike Perry brought up the whole decision matrix yesterday. Yeah, we're, we're actually doing this because of you, Mike. So thanks for that comment yesterday. And Mandracul here. Wow, you named the module after me and a heart emoji. Yeah, you, see, you deserve it. It was your brilliant idea, Mandracul, with, with um, slotting the vibraphone straight in and out. So you can have two modules. I don't know if I added that if or, or if that was your idea. Probably yours. And basically it's the best solution I've ever heard of for rechangeable uh, vibraphone notes. So so it comes from you. Is it correct spelling? Because I've been have I'm writing Mandracula all the time. Yeah, and you should just delete the E on the end. Mandracula module. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's do this for all our OCD friends in chat because we know you're out there. You're planning. And we respect you all. <laughs> yeah. We're one and the same, all of <clears> us. <throat> so um, I wonder if I can actually put this function here. I wonder if I can not having to. I'm just going to experiment. Equals five times this there we go i think this is a cleaner way um so i don't have to um no i actually want to see the i actually want to see what score we give it <clears throat> so i'm gonna do it like five this. points two mandracule modules single drop <laughs> it's not your it's your revision song contest yes okay let's start Deux point. 11 note MMX style mandracule module single drop. Note range. It's bad. It's a one. Is it bad? 
Ja, yeah, per song. Okay, ja. Yeah. No range per song. Ja, yeah, okay. It's, it's in the long run, it's okay. Ja, yeah, okay. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Um, note repeatability, it's the worst. It's one. Reliability, so. Oh, wait. I should, I should do, I should do all the sign options for the same category. I should do it from the, from top to toe instead. Okay. And, um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a result matrix down here instead. Oh, result Ma matrix. Result yeah, matrix. baby. It's not a matrix. Yeah, even. baby. So, because then, then we can, this is actually better. So I'm not going to do, I'm going to keep on double drop. It has the same note range. So here is better note range, but not good. 22 note, double drop, same. 37 note, mandracule module, single drop. Um, <clears throat> Moving upwards to three or four here, right? Yeah, this is a four. Um, double drop. So that's a four. Okay. Full size, off the shelf, vibraphone, single drop. So note range. Note range is great there. But note range, I'm thinking of repeatability, which is in the next column. Yeah, yeah. Um, but why is this not then a 5 then yeah. for the 37? Uh, uh, should this... The reason... Chat is also saying you should use some product. That's something in the spreadsheet for your calculations later. Yeah, that's... I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I'm doing that later um are some product is that what exactly some product what is that some special you thing? should use some product row of weights row of score in cell with total use some product function i don't know if they mean some function or if they mean some product function they will tell me. Believe me, it will come here. Full size. Um, so I'm going to give five, even though I have, because the note repeatability is going to be. So five for those, five also for this, five for this. One, one, two, two, five, five. So maybe the 22 notes should actually be a three. Now when I see the spread. Let's do that. There we go. Note repeatability. Maybe I should count. Maybe if I have the formula, I should. No, we can do. Should I have made the formulas beforehand? Ivar um. Krobel, some product will multiply each weight with its score. Then sum them together so you won't need a second table. Okay, interesting. So I'm actually going to go in uh, to, to see what sum product is. So I'm equal sum product, sum of products of elements in two arrays. Genius. Uh, we're going to see how sum between this and. I don't know. Times C6. I never used some product. No. Uh, yeah, so you have to. I don't know how to use this. Uh, let me do a quick because we're here to learn. <laughs> How to use some product. Mr. Gonsnature, some product is an array formula, so you need to use shift plus enter. Use that and use it in total column. Okay. So yeah, you can't use it in the column you were in. Highlight to row. Okay, so use it afterwards. You can use some product in the total column. Okay, so it's it's not it's it's just going to basically um, um, so 
in the total later when you have added everything. Total price. Oh yeah, here they are mul multiplying price over quantity. Some. So let me try equals some product. What this? What did Gonsonator says? You have to have shift. Also this one with this one. No, 30x. Something is happening. Now I think I just added all that. <laughs> this is actually not what the stream is about. Um, so someone send, someone send a screenshot to to uh, to Discord, how the formula should look, and then I and I'll apply it after we put um, points in. Note repeatability. I'm gonna remove this row. Um, Eleven note single drop. So all the single drops. No, not all the single drops. The small single drops gets a one here. But here, on the 37 note MMX style, and actually this 22 note get a two because you can have the same note on two places. So you can repeat by having the same note on two places. And this one gets a three. Um, Full size off the shelf vibraphone single drop gets a three because of 37 notes. Oh no 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 no. This gets a one because we have we have only chromatic scale. We can't repeat the same note here. Um eleven notes, single drop gets a one. Twenty-two not note, single drop gets a Mm, two circular full size vibraphone single dropper gets a one. So that's all the single drops. So the double drops, this gets a two. Now maybe this gets a three. This gets a four. This gets a five. That's perfect. Five. And same down here actually. Circular 11 note double drop gets a 3, 22 double 4, full size double 5. Let's go on to reliability. So the mandrakil module is picked on and off the machine, and you need to. It's coffee time. It's coffee time. And you need to reprogram it. So it's. That, I think, brings the reliability down. It's only 11 notes, and you have to retune the resonators and stuff. But the fact that it's only a few notes makes makes it like kind of easier to rely on it, I think, in some strange way. Less parts that can go wrong. I'm going to put pretty high on this. Three. Uh, the double drop should be lower than that should be two because that's going to be technical in more parts Maybe I'm a little low. Let's do four and three here and then the 22 note I'm gonna give them less score so we do No, it's the same actually fourth four three four and three for the 22 version 37 note manacle. It's huge. It has a lot of parts. I'm going to lower the score for this one. Three and two. Full size off the shelf vibraphone single drop reliability five. It's cut it's no custom parts. The trade has figured out something that works. They have the correct bearings, they have everything. They fig they solved it. It's a solved problem. That's something for Mar Machine 3. I'm going to try to stay away from solving problems that other people have already solved. Um, full size off the shelf vibraphone double drop. I have to give it less reliability because the double drop is uh, making it worse. Four. 
We also have the in-air collisions in here, but that's that's uh, accounted for in another way. Um, circular 11 note reliability. Huh, this is difficult. Single drop 4, double drop 3, single drop 4, double drop 3. Circular full-size vibraphone single dropper is a 5. Thank you, Hannes. Double dropper is a 4. Reliability of the circular. Yeah. High points overall there. Acoustic quality. So this is difficult. Um, for the result of this decision matrix to make sense, I have to actually think through these answers. The acoustic quality depends mostly of of um, the separation from the drums. And the only reason to make 11 note, to make them small, is to be able to build a compact machine and not a spread out machine. So I'm going to punish the small, uh, small things with a low acoustic quality score. Um, because it's also acoustically less interesting. So... Let's do two on the 11 notes and let's do three on the 22 notes and let's do four. This is good actually. Mandracular module custom built. Four on our custom built and let's do five on the full size. I'm so biased to the full size, so... You don't say. <laughs> so this this whole thing... But they say you don't have to follow the result. You, it helps you... Yeah. This is about... Deciding. Getting yeah. help deciding. Just for everyone feeling good out there, I'm going to give this a nice crop now. Oh, thank you. There we go. Nicer crop. Oh, no name. H3K, we are in part seven of the live. Oh, Ooh. thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, thank you. Yes. And so we go back not to here, we go back to here. Ease of design in regards to space requirements. Here we go. 11 note, five. 11 note, single drop, five. So I'm going to give the single drops fives and I'm gonna give the 11 note double drops fours and then 22 single drops fours and 22 double drops threes now my favorite ones are gonna get punished 37 note single drop is a two and 37 note Oh. Double drop. Don't mind me, I'm just winding myself up here. <laughs> so I can go a while longer. <laughs> <laughs> Crank it up. Crank it all the way to the top. Full size of the um full size of the shelf vibraphone. So ease of design in regards to space requirements. This is tr tricky because it's easy to design because it's off the of, of, of the, the shelf, shelf yeah. so but it takes a lot of space but it's, it's actually better than the mandracule module it is easy if we just give it space <laughs> then it's really simple yeah. so i'm going to give this three for single and two for double and then here the circular full-size vibraphone single is a two and the circular full-size vibraphone double dropper is a one it's not easy um, ease of song change. 11 note mandrakil module with like two different ones. Um, so, you, so you change them and you slot them in with resonators and everything. 
it's pretty easy. Okay. You still need to build two. Yeah. And you still need to have personnel doing it. So yeah. I'm I'm not giving it a five. I'm giving it a three. I'm gonna give this a three. I'm gonna give this a three. The twenty-two RCS a three. This big one is actually really hard to make the space for that. Actually, this should be two, and this should be one. Uh, I'm punishing the big ones because then you have you slot in a full size vibraphone. It's kind of crazy. Full size off the shelf vibraphone, single drop. Ease of song change, five. There's nothing to be done there. You don't do anything on the vibraphone. Full size off the shelf, double drop, five. You don't any do. You don't have to do nada, zero, nil. Zip, zip the duda. <laughs> Um, 11 note vibraphone, circular 11 note vibraphone, single drop. What's this? They are rechangeable. Oh, circular. So this would be, uh, but wait, this is, is this a mandra? Is this a circular mandracule? <laughs> the circular mandracule. Because I wouldn't do... How do we change notes on these? Okay, maybe we slot them. It's not easy to change songs on these. That's no. everything we have to think about. There's a one. It's a two on the smaller, because it's only 11, and one on the 22. Okay, yeah. And then here, the full-size vibraphone, five. You do no nothing. Sip, nil, zero, blank. <laughs> Um, all right. Should we do this? I'm a little excited. Maybe we should not do the results now. We should, we should, we should do the result last. Keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Ease of transport, everyone. 11 note, small one, five. Because it's just smaller. So <laughs> I'm going to sure. give all the small ones. The circular is probably taking... Hmm. Yeah, that's a trickier one. Gonna gonna give the circular a four. The twenty-two knot gets a four. The circular twenty-two gets a three. Um, this mandrakeel module thirty-seven notes. It won't help the footprint, and we have a whole extra thing to bring with us: a two and a one for the double drop. Full size off the shelf. So here comes the tricky thing. There's nothing to remove here. So I think ease of transport will be a two on the full size. Yeah, they're fixed on the machine then. They're fixed on the machine, but they're making the machine large. Yeah. So let's make them a two. This makes sense. Repair ability. How should I think here? Less parts makes it easier to control I guess but also off the shelf is done is 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 also built to last it's designed well repairability I should probably punish the double drops because they need to be close to each other um so I'm gonna I'm gonna celebrate the single drops in repairability because it's so much less parts um so let's give the simple ones. Here, here's we have to give the simple ones some advantages. So, eleven note single gets a five. Circular gets a four. Double gets a four. So we follow this pattern: three, twenty-two note single four, twenty-two note circular three. Double gets a two. This gets also a two. This is the worst one. The 37 man recule. Doesn't look good for that one. Uh, full size of the shelf vibraphone single drop. That I have to give that a five. Double drop. I'm going to give that a three. Circular full size vibraphone. Complicated. Four. four no, wrong one. What was I here? Say two. Say two. Four for this one. Circular single dropper and circular full size three. 
is our marble gate positioning. So it's very easy. Single drop everywhere gets a five, especially the low note counts. So low single dropper gets five. But perhaps I should deduct for the ones with a lot of gates. So the full size, this, oh, the circular is not. Circular gets a three. And this gets a four. Ease of marble gate positioning on the 11 double drop. So here I'm going to punish three, two, one. Full size of the shelf. Double drop is a one. It's it is tricky. Three, two, one. I think I'm following the pattern there. Ha! Huh. Manual playability. Huh. So when I think of manual playability, I, I think of my ability to like to improvise. So if someone in a concert says I want to believe I can like when I I can play that, you know, just uh, <laughs> to be to be funny, you know. Yeah, I have your mallets ready in a holster, but <laughs> yeah, there we go. And maybe this is not the re design requirement that to help Martin with his stand-up show. Um, so, but manual playability is also like more notes makes it more fun to play it manual as yes. well. Um, and I can even have songs where I make up completely new parts. So let me make a quick demo of what I mean here. So let's let's we already said that we had a song with two parts. So with the two programs. So we, we did this with program A. I'm gonna make this demo again. But I'm now I'm gonna add a third manual part. So nice. this is program A. Halfway the loop. This is still program A. And now the loop is ending. And I pull the lever. Hannes pulls the lever. Here comes pro program B. A whole new world appears. And I do the trick where I cut a song short in half the uh, uh, half the wheel, other half of program B. End of program B. And I pull the breakdown lever. Not the breakdown. We mute the vibraphone. I start to play manually. Program A. So, by being able to play any note manually, I can improvise that and I can still play the bass and the drums and reach over. So there we have it. Manual playability. Will I be able... So, 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 so now we have two contrasting things. I was like, more notes makes it easier to play manual. But if more notes means that we're going to put the machine far away, let's go to the keynote. For any new viewers, in the beginning of the stream, we have been looking at some um, kind of... We've been actually looking at this. I think you're zoomed in now. Yeah, but, 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 but. Let's do it from here then. So we've been looking at suggestions like this. This is wonderful by Ralph. Um, and here's another one. And we have also yesterday evening, me, here's another one. No, that's actually not another one. So here's another one. Been discussing like how we can 
This is a wonderful sketch by Crafted by Aura. And here you can see that I would reach the vibraphone. This is where I'm going with this. We have to think, of, would I reach the vibraphone from playing the bass? So if I want to add like completely new parts to the songs that can't fit into the programming, then I need to reach the vibraphone. And in this version, I would be able to do that with the bass. Uh, kind of in this beautiful version by Gonsonator, um, this would be hard. Um, so here's a beautiful circular from Digger Me Up. So this is actually the sketch that made me include circular vibraphone because it's it's just too cool. <laughs> it's just plainly too cool, right, Hannes? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to go for the sketches me and Hannes made yesterday evening here as well. So these are the kind of new things we are contemplating. And in this sketch, you can see that I, it would be really tricky for me to reach over to the vibraphone and play the bass at the same time. Um, so with all that said, how do we actually... Um, um, what is this criteria? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Manual playability. I thought that more notes would give more manual playability, but if more note means that the vibraphone is further away from me, that's also not true. So it's kind of hard to score this. Um, should we maybe just omit this criteria? Because it's a kind of, or just put a three on everything, or 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 just ignore it. Is there any difference between these design choices? Um, yeah, think about the ergonomics. You can just quickly think about okay, the circular one is probably harder to play. Oh, right? That's true. That's true. So let's give let's give all these a three. Um. And I should remove the weight of this because it's a, such a... So I'm going to change the weight of the manual playability column to one because I think it's um, it's not really important um, because I don't really know what we're grading almost. So I'm just going to give the circular a two then. There we go. Ease, soon we have the points, everyone. Ease of manufacture and supply. 11 note. Okay, I know which one. The off the shelf, fibers. The off the shelf might be fibers, but we have also the double drop and also, so the off the shelf vibraphones that we're looking at, uh, for example, this, um, it, It's in one level, so if we want the marbles from the top level to bounce over them, we maybe have to cut this in half after we buy yes. it. Yes! <laughs> yes! We're going to buy this one for a uh, nice uh, 8,000 pounds and then just cut it with angle. Yes! Um, da -da 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 -da. So this is also a little tricky. Ease of manufacturers, but they have to be easier. Single drop, let's say five, let's say four. Full size of the shelf, double drop, let's say four. Circular is probably a two or something. Two, circular, yeah, the, the circular, I'm gonna make them, this one is three because it's a little smaller. Ease of manufacture, no, what, what, who am I kidding? The off the shelf must stand out here. Yeah. We have to differentiate. Um, we have to give them... Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. Boom. So full size of the shelf vibraphone is uh, winning big in ease of manufacture. Cost. Um, it's so hard to know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put three. I'm just going to average this out. Looks. A lot of people wanted us to remove looks. I kept looks in and I set the lowest weight to it. So it only has one in weight. 
So note range is three times as important than looks. Yeah. So I think looks um, looks have has its uh, uh, space in here. Um, oh wow! What happened now? <laughs> You're laughing at my. It's I'm laughing with you. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. that's the difference, right? That is that is different. Um, it's an ugly. I should just do this, maybe. That feels better. <sighs> Slice of Sparta again being very generous today. With a comment here, Pat Metheny achieved manual playability on a vibraphone via MIDI with tons of mallets and solenoids in his orchestrion project. Very complicated and electronic, but you should check it out regardless. I saw Pat Metheny live, uh, old hero from my jazz guitar days. Uh, I saw Pat Metheny live in Stockholm uh, like two years ago. Um, we had actually the same... Um, we were working with Pat Metheny's like, manager or something in the US. Um, and so I was super like starstruck. Whoa, it's the same person who works with Pat Metheny. And I've seen the Orchestrion project. Uh, everyone should check it out on YouTube. It's 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 brilliant. That's and I never thought of actually looking there for inspiration now. So good good one, Sparta. Um, meanwhile, looks okay. Let's let's go with the obvious. Circular full size vibe from double double dropper five. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do Do you need me to show you a picture again? Well, I'm not as sold as you are on that idea. Let me just say that this is uh, okay, but it's your project. What you five. don't like? You don't like the circular? It can be cool, but I am more, as you know, it takes time for me to readjust. Yeah, but that's maybe I'm. I'm always talking about the DNA, you know. Yeah, you're more conservative, which yep. is which I can learn from. Um, you're very like metal should be metal. Yeah, uh, don't yeah, don't mix and match too much, you know. Here we go. We have the results. Unfortunately, I do not know how to use the sum product yet. Oh, perfect! That what a timing from <laughs> Sir Three K. Can you see what it says there? That you have you have the sum project there. Can you see it? Oh, thank you for sending exactly what I need. Um, can you make it bigger? I'm not sure, sadly. Let's see. Just give me one second. I will try to open it up larger. <sighs> so I didn't see a multiplier in 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 that formula. So equals. Some product. Let's see if we can see something this time. Okay. A comma. Yeah, chat says a comma was important. You missed it last time. That was it. Let's try. I'm taking the weight. Yeah, show. Yeah, we can show. So I'm taking this weight, and then I put a comma, and then I take in this. So it's a comma like a multiplier. Oh, well, look. something happened at least. Out of fill. Ba ba boom boom. Circular full size vibraphone. <claps> Done for the day. Decision is made. Let's start cadding. <laughs> no, Thank 184 you. here. Thank you to Kias. Okay. Is this how? Where? Why are? Where are they multiplying? What, what what did you say? Kias. Kias. Thank you. That was, that was brilliant. So can someone explain to me, is the multiplying happening over the comma? Like three multiplied by one? So let, let me just check this. If I increase this width to two, this should move up three steps to 87. Yeah, it is. But this also moved. What? So this didn't is didn't lock row. Mm -hmm. Error. Yeah, this is not good. Remember the the, the when you copy them from 
people know. This might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to... No, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it's taking the wrong one. So I'm going to I'm have to go over like this and say... Let's see there. Watch about watch out about the copy function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is needed on wait row. And I see chat is saying the same thing. Dollars symbol. needed on wait row. Yeah, I, I can also do... I can also just change this to uh, five here. If I do five... The dollar sign before each five. Uh, 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 uh. So now, now I fixed it. You have to use C dollar sign five. Oh, to lock? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, I have a European keyboard now. <laughs> I'm going to go get a dollar sign. Okay, so that's to lock a row. I'm you learning can, here. Yeah, you can lock it with the dollar sign. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, do, 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 Top do. row is correct, but the other ones are not. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go get a dollar sign from, from the internet. Is that how you do it? Yeah. I you just go and get a dollar on the internet? <laughs> I, I Google I copy it into my wallet, and there we have money. That's that's the gist of it, yeah. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna copy this later. Then so C dollar five. Now I'm going to copy down like this. That didn't end up well. So let's remove this and let's see if we can have the auto. Out of fill suggestion again. No. This goes wrong. Some product has mismatched rank sizes. Expected row count to. Oh, there is. Oh, I need a dollar in front of both fives. Here we go. Check this out. That was what I said, didn't they? Yeah. Um, maybe there. Did something happen now? This looks right. So now it's always take the weight. Okay, cool. And it's a shame it's out of picture. I'm going to show everyone. So now you can see the formula is always locking row five. Now I can just copy down like this. I'm going to re remove that one. Okay, so now we have new results actually. Ba 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 boom. Was it lucky I didn't design the machine with those faulty calculations? <laughs> Let's see now, chat. Because of the delay here, they are still screaming at their screens right now that it's painful to watch right now. <laughs> <laughs> Pain. You're, you're welcome. Pain. You're welcome. We deliver. We deliver. <laughs> we deliver this. This is... Oh, um, let's see. It seems right now. It's it's correct. And we have a winner. Are we we're looking for the highest, highest point. score? Yeah, okay. highest score. Ooh, it's actually the single drop that one. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> My bias fooled me. Yeah, but then <laughs> Why did you win? Now I have to change score to make it not win. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> That's how this That's works. That's not right? how it works. That's not how it works, okay. But they said, uh, let me quote the tutorial. Um, if I go out a little bit, like here. Um, oh, Mike Perry says a good thing here also. The good thing about this is that it allows for backups if the top choice does not work out. That's actually correct. Now we have a top three of solutions. That's that's great. And here it says, point six, multiply each option's rating by the weight. Add the points for each option. The option with the highest score will not necessarily be the one to choose, but the relative scores can generate meaningful discussion and lead the team toward consensus. Mm. So... Um, and just yes, eat Ethan G nine eleven. Who needs Elden Ring with this much pain? <laughs> I feel you, my brother. 
fantastic. <laughs> if I would get the reference, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Um, so first of all, as always, there's two aspects to this. We made our first decision matrix in my life, and I love it. It's it's because the pros and cons list. It's basically a more intelligent, versatile pros and cons list, kind of. And I do think like you have to spend a lot of work in all the data you put into it. And it feels like, yeah. And chat is kind of reminding that perhaps we're on stage eight now. Ooh, <laughs> result. A mole, please. Mm, fantastic. Yes, now I feel complete. Um, that's that's good. Um, not not lose track of our formalia for me. So we have the winners. Are these? Can I range them? If I pull them around, are they going to be happy with me? I think so. Yeah. I'm just gonna arrange them by score now. formulas are intelligent enough it's a quite big jump yeah so full-size vibraphone like i have a strong bias towards that yeah that's exactly what we came up with after stream yesterday yeah when we were sitting and talking yesterday hannes was like yeah but this is this is what you want yeah let's go for that we'll find ways to solve that if it is that important it needs to be there right that's my design requirement <laughs> I can probably, um, I know I can make this document self-sorting, uh, but I'm not going to spend time learning how to. No, we need this time to marinate also. Yeah, it's a kind of cozy to do this manually. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move this up here. So. Yeah, the full size is high. So let's look at let's look at the weak points for the top alternative. So we can go and see here. Ease of Marble Gates positioning. Um full size double drop. Even you know I, I, this is solvable. So this one here is solvable. Um And this is not solvable. So, so like, if I... I wonder how I could, like... So, on the top two alternatives, we have two weak points uh, that, that sticks out to me. This ease of marble gates positioning on the full size with double drop, but the ro note repeatability. And then we go back to our design requirement. Do we want the machine to be able to play the Marble Machine song? Yeah? Yes! Yeah. Actually, this top option does not meet that re design requirement. So, um, it's just a. I think I'm going to do a strike through. Boom. Okay, yeah, so we need double drop. I hate the strike throughs. Um, so these single droppers, uh, I'm going to take them down here because I don't think they meet, um, like I should have made, I should make this like note repeatability five. If I change the weight, um, oh, they're still on the top <laughs> 10. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Three. But you can see the formula works nice anyway. I'm gonna remove those. Um, because they're, they will just not meet other design requirements. Um, and then the step down to this is... Long. So we're actually left 
with two options here. Uh, let me do this. Full size off the shelf with double drop or circle full size with double dropper. So double drop it is. Double drop it is. Nice. We come to a conclusion here. Um, and both of these have no changing parts between songs. You just change the program, the vibraphone stays on. It can play any music. I was thinking during lunch, maybe I do not want to manufacture a machine this big, which means that we come very close to giving up on the whole project. And as I said in all the live streams, I want to find out if I should give up or not. So if I decide like this week, no, I'm not going to build Marble Machine 3 because it's going to be too big. But I feel I'm I'm just not interested in going down any of these roads. For the moment. I mean, we, we, we can change. We can get back to stuff. Um, and, and I know it's, it is a little ridiculous because I had, a, this was my bias. Uh, Really? Through the, whole <laughs> <laughs> through the whole exercise. But I do have a heart. I can't cut my heart out, okay? No. Yeah, we wouldn't be there to beat while I was playing. It would just be a vampire playing. Do they have hearts, by the way? Yeah, what are you piercing the, with the stakes otherwise? Oh, that's true. That's true. I saw Boxen's Mannen last weekend. He was pierced with a stake. Oh. Yeah. There we go. We have... And now we can actually insert this result into our design requirements. <laughs> Call me Niles. Oh, no. Not cheating. Creative math. <laughs> <laughs> so... I started to try to make the vibraphone design requirement. And these were the two first things. So let's try now to write this as, as requirements. Um, so not as a question. A note of the vibraphone needs to be repeatable one note one note of the vibraphone needs to be repeatable within xx milliseconds i should actually like we should actually check did it um we should check in logic, how many milliseconds that is. Because that's what everyone has taught me in this design requirement document, that it has to be verifiable. So um, we have these great text improvements on how to write design requirements. And they say each requirement must be quantifiable and verifiable. So if I just say here in the vibraphone design requirement, you have to be able to play the same note fast. It's not quantifiable. It's not verifiable. So let's do our homework here. Hannes 3000. Oh, wow. Let's become engineers. Let's become we? scientists. Shall we? Let's do experiments. Entertain the audience while I'm starting logic. Wow. That's a tall order, my friend. No, no. You're good at it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we got a mold there because we've come a long way. To let me know what people are saying then. If you... If you want. Yeah, they're, so they're, they're laughing at that you you manipulate the results to your bias here. <laughs> and some people are also, stop this, Martin. Just trust your gut. If you have this feeling, go for it then. I, I, I can really relate and now, to that. And now we have even done the math that, okay, your option is probably the best one now when we have done this mathematical exercise so i went with the gut um so i i went with the gut previously and um and i have some footage of what happened so here i went with this happened <laughs> you 
you lose. Yeah. So and then and then I was like, let's not go with the gut. Let's like use engineering. And then this happened. Yeah. So uh, what I'm trying to build bring is the some more decision making. Uh, <laughs> you lose. Look, I don't look happy there. So. Yeah, and by the, you want to say now that you can't learn anything new in the processes? <laughs> I want to say that, oh yeah, I'm not, my MIDI keyboard is not to this computer. As right. Jack Horn says, your Just gut realize. is more trained now. There you see. Just realized. Let me get a music box. My gut is more trained now. <laughs> um, do I even have the music box here? Uh, it's, never mind. We're going to use this then. Yes, go for it. Less math, more gut. Yeah. We ha we have to do a combination. I think we have to do a combination. Are you hearing yeah, this? Yeah, I'm hearing everything. So nice. I can't play the MIDI keyboard because the keyboard is not to this computer. Oh, okay. I see the problem. Okay, so for those who are, have joined the stream and haven't seen it from the beginning, basically this stream has been all about figuring out the the requirements for the vibraphone on the Marble Machine 3. And so far it looks like we have come to the conclusion of a full range of the shelf vibraphone. A full range that we don't have to change during the concert, so you have all the notes all the time on the machine. You don't have to uh, swap it with different plates and different resonator pipes. Even one sixteenth of the song is a hit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so why are we doing this? We went, we played much faster. We played this. Or did we play a little slower? A little slower, right? Yeah. So now we're gonna get a milliseconds on the difference on these two notes. This is the same D note here, repeating. So I'm gonna check uh, if I go to custom here. We should have the milliseconds up there somewhere. Um, where's my milliseconds? Uh, where is my milliseconds? Are they up there? Deleted says the easiest, most convenient option is to play music with literally anything other than a marble machine. Yes. It's a project of passion, not logic. Follow your gut and use your experience. Totally agree. Um, so I need to educate myself a little bit, but not so much. So because... Like, I don't want to build a machine that I don't love. So I'm, I am I will not... It will be... Not everything will not be logical. I don't know much about Star Trek, but the the guy with the ears... Spock? Sp <laughs> Spock is not going to design this machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's an apt reference, I think. Um, so... Now I'm exposing myself because where are my milliseconds? Uh, da, 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 da. And speaking about logic, you're in logic right now. Well, this is some matrix stuff right here. So we're 14. Oh, 55 up there is seconds. Oh, so the, the decimal is the milliseconds. 
Okay, that 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 are actually milliseconds. I just read it wrong. Um, so we go from here. We have thirteen point oh nine, and we go here. Did the fifty five change? Fifty five? No. No. Twenty one thirty two. Is that a tenth of a, is that 100 milliseconds then? It's less than 100 milliseconds. I don't really know. Is that second number going to, where's that frames? Yeah, that's frames, you know, 24. So I need to, this is why it's actually ticks. It's not milliseconds. That's why I need to show change like in. Yeah, so entertain the audience, and I'm gonna learn how to where to enable the millisecond view. Simon Rosen, Simon Rosen, you need to add a love requirement to the <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will find a balance because all these like technical stuff will be like the logical side, and then everything else will be the gut feeling and the love. Um, and Visigothic 67, play Yaya Ding Dong. You, <laughs> you always need that one. <laughs> uh, to see milliseconds in logic. Where else says 0 0.08 seconds? Preferences display. I knew this. Come on, Martin. I'm disappointed. Freddy Cantouche. In the end, even a well thought through decision, well, uh, even a well thought through decision, may be less than optimal. When you did MMX, you talked a lot about iterative, iterative design, Tesla, SpaceX, and that's a valid approach too. That's a good, good comment. Yeah. So we're displaying time as, and my zoom is not functional. Uh, with subframes, we want to display the time as hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. There we go. Solved it. Um, and cast then. Marble Machine Song is 145 BPM if that helps with figuring out the time. Oh, so we were way fast here. That is helping. 145. I don't want this as the lowest number though. So now we have milliseconds. So here's the beginning of the note. 09310 What? Oh. Yeah, so that's really milliseconds up here. There. <laughs> wow, enhance. I'm going to fix the zoom. I'm going to fix the zoom. I need it on my checklist. This number minus 310. 724 minus 310. 724 minus 310. 414. Are you kidding me? Did you just do that? <laughs> I think I just nailed it, Hannes. Do you want me to control it for Congratulate you? me, yes, please. We need a control on that one. 414. What was it? Um, for, um, 4.14. Okay, you're stand. You're... So Max Timmy has made a suggestion already here to be repeatable x amount of times to, okay, to make it, to make, so I, it's implicit, I think, to be repeatable one more. That's how I'm, I'm thinking. Within, what did you say? What? 4.14. 414, that was your calculation, but we stand by it. And I think like, I'm going to at least give some buffer. So I'm at least going to go 400 milliseconds. So it's within less than half a second, we have to be able to play um, the same note. Ta -da. <laughs> and I think I'm going to like 300. So, we have our first. So, so the suggestion there uh, from was that 
to define how many times repeatable, but I, what I mean here is that the next next instance of the note should be repeatable, but may, maybe I, I should make that more clear. So the note range in one song shall, I use the needs is a word that people get triggered by. Shall is a shall requirement. It shall. Shall. Um, the note range in one song shall be F3 to F7. Should be chromatic from F3 to F7. 37 notes. So, um, Satish Kumar is here in the document. Satish uh, Kumar is everywhere. Satish Kumar is usually the first commenter on our live stream. So nice to see you here, Satish. Uh, the BPM is not needed here. Um, so within 300 milliseconds, regardless of, of BPM. Uh, so um, I'm going to reject the suggestion. Um, let me see. How I can move this back. Um, so we have, and actually, with if we look at our decision, we 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 can we can have a lot of. Um, um, this means that the, the there is no tuning of the resonators. There is no exchanging of notes. Yes. Uh, it's just on the machine forever and ever. No hassle with that ever, ever. for a song change, which means we could actually add now. Um, to change a song, uh, nothing should be needed. I, I don't uh, No, I, I'm double negating. I'm going to um, the vibraphone shall be able to change song without changing parts or without changing bars 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 or pipes or uh, resonators So I can remove all these question marks. And here you can see my dream requirements, full scale, same repeatabil repeatability. All this can be taken away. These are my notes. All this can be gone. Um, all this can full top row or standard piano pattern. That's for late. This is not design agnostic. Um, <laughs> nice chat is with me. What are they saying? <laughs> no, don't worry, Hannes. I got the outcast reference. <laughs> <laughs> Switching from song one to song two shall take no more than X minutes. And Sap Anderson wants me to remind you, Martin, how fast the escapement gates were. Don't forget how fast we got them. Yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's but my answer. No. Oh, brilliant. On A, I say B, and on C, I don't know. So, we are actually having um, our first vibraphone design request, uh, design um, requirement requirements down. Um, so Max has Max has given an explanation here. What I meant by X amount of times is that repeat once within 300 milliseconds is reasonably easy. To have a preload that will be reloaded within one second is easier. 
repeatable forever within 300 milliseconds is harder. Ah, Max, now I get it. You're now I, now I know what you mean. You're on the third note. Um, so Max, I I totally now I understand what you mean. Um, so Max is thinking when we're playing um, note one and note two by the second dropper. But how fast can we then go back to note one? So good, well, good point. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to make this totally non-ambiguous. Um, after the first note, first instance, instance. First drop, first hit. <laughs> there we go. Of a note on the vibraphone. The note shall be repeatable. The second note, the second hit shall be repeatable. Shall be re not repeatable then. Um, so I'm going to accept your suggestion here, uh, Max Timia. The second hit shall be ready to play. I'm going to omit the word repeat because that's to play the same note after no longer than. 300 mm. after at least oh yeah after no longer than 300 milliseconds this is this is true the third note the third hit the third hit of the same note and when you get down to it to try to write without ambiguity it's like so tricky right <laughs> The third hit of the same note shall be ready to play. So then we are um, within one and the same marble gate. And to everyone's point, like how fast we got the gates, um, shall be ready to play um, after no longer than... Um, So, for example, a kick drum. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that measurement from bar one to bar three. So, if we're gonna play uh, four on the floor, um, so let's say we play in 145. Um, oh. Sorry. Wow, yeah. Sorry. I hear the crowd roaring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Um. <clears throat> so this is 145, for example. I would love to be able to play kick drums in like 200. Um. Now we're getting into metal territory here. Here we go. This might be... Uh, Chat, we're getting close to the rain in blood right now. <laughs> 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 this might be unnecessary. Um, so from here, and you can see up here that we have zero milliseconds, and to the third is 600 right now. I don't think we need to ever play this fast. So if I if I exclude this, it would be like this for the same gate. Well, let's say six hundred. Six hundred. Yeah. Why not? 
600. Because it was exactly what it was. It was so funny that it was just a double. Um, now what we have after all this. So basically to everyone saying go with your gut and stuff like that. I totally agree with you. But what I'm trying here is that I'm trying to learn a little bit about better processes uh, to give. I'm, I'm like, I'm, 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 when you prepare for a match, it's not like you go into a gym and say, what are you doing here? Beating the, beating the shit out of this like uh, <coughs> pounding bag and trying to get in shape for the max. Wait for the max match and go with your gut. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like that's so, what Eddie Hall did, and look how that went. <laughs> exactly, baboom. So what I'm doing, I'm at the gym right now, um, like uh, trying to um, hit harder. Yeah, uh, studying technique. I'm studying technique. Footwork. Footwork. <laughs> Jabbing. A killer uh, uppercut. So 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 it's not like I'm gonna replace. Um, my motivation to go into the ring and, and 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 win over my opponent, but I need to kind of like to build a better machine. I need to b become better myself. So I'm not abandoning like my old way of doing things, but I want to add uh, like uh, techniques like a decision matrix into my repertoire, into my arsenal of weapons to defeat the monster that is the Mar Machine Three. And right now we have. Our first design requirements and they sound like this after the first hit of a note on the vibraphone the second hit shall be ready to play the same note after no longer than 300 milliseconds the third hit of the same note shall be ready to play after no longer than 600 milliseconds after the first hit the note range in one song shall be chromatic from f3 to f7 37 notes the vibraphone shall be able to change the song without changing bars, without changing bars or resonators. So I, I really love how different it sounds to what we had a week ago in this document. Um, yeah, things were, things are getting crystallized. Yeah, a little bit. So, I'm going to. Um, Put this decision matrix on the document <laughs> on the documentation central on the website, and and then I'm going to like uh, ponder what does this mean <laughs> for the Marble Machine Three. What it, is this? It might mean that I don't want to build a machine, and then this project has come to a, a, its successful conclusion. So what everyone, if anyone doesn't un realize what I mean with that. I'm 100% serious. It says in the design requirements that why we're doing this. Let me just find the why. It's too many people in the documents, maybe. So here we have um, on the why. Um, and I can clean it up by doing this. Um, so there are two different reasons why I'm doing this project. A, I want to go on a world tour playing a Marvel machine live on stage. B, I want to make my best effort possible on building the machine before I'm able to give up. And I think I will be able to determine from CAD if I should give up or not. And uh, that's why today's decision is a pretty big one. But I'm so happy that we managed to take it. So there we go. That was the last mole of the stream. It's been an honor, 3K. It's been an honor, all the Gretzkys in the chat. Thanks for everyone supporting with the super chat and for being here with us. And now I have to uh, uh, leave this to marinate for, for a little while. <laughs> like my dear friend said, it's been a true joy sitting here broadcasting out to you, the wonderful viewers out there, bringing all the awesomeness in the chat, supporting us with the super chats and giving us great ideas. See you on the next one. <laughs>